Alrighty, people, welcome back to Chronicles of Power, a podcast dedicated to the world of power, where I review and break down the latest episode in the Powerverse. We are brought to you by Private Listed, your source for all things music, sports, culture, and entertainment. Follow the new podcast page. It's at Chronicles of Power on Instagram. You can find us on YouTube at PVTLSTD. My name is Kimi, and today we won't be breaking down an episode because today we actually have a genius in the building with us we have a fashion connoisseur with us today we have someone who makes everything look better and her name is Sage white robinson and she is from raising canaan she is the costume designer the scientist behind all of the great looks <laughs> that you see on the show. I know she's laughing right now, but like, I mean this with all my heart. She puts these together with chemistry, okay? And so I want to introduce you all to her, just in case you don't know who is behind all of these looks. And I hope that you are going to be as enamored with her as I am. Thank you very Welcome. much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Oh, no problem. I'm so excited that this finally came to fruition. So, how are you doing? Good. A little nervous. Don't be. I don't really bite. Fine. Only people I don't like. Okay. <laughs> and I love you. So, Thank therefore, you. you're going to be all right here. And this is a safe space. So, normally, when we start these off, we do it, like, in chronological order, right? We say, like, how did you start and everything. And I do want to start there with you. But prior to costume designing, right, before Raising Canaan, all of that stuff, were you always into fashion or were you always or did you do something differently? So I grew up uh, with a mother and a grandmother and an aunt <laughs> that loved and loved clothes <laughs> on both sides of my family, my dad's side and my mother's side. So I got it very honestly. And I remember having the, I have the fondest memories of spending my Christmases and my summers with my grandmother shopping at Gafer's the store in Montgomery, Alabama, is where she's from, where I would spend my summers, um, shopping the sale racks for designers, you know, designer clothing on sale. Uh -huh. um, so I think that growing up, um, spending my holidays in the stores from the time they opened to the time they closed. Oh, yeah, I was in I there. was getting <laughs> training, right? Yeah. I was being trained, I think. Um, and so I grew up with a love for it, you know, watching them. Okay, and then prior to working in the industry, did you work anywhere else, or did you? I was in college. I was in college. So you came straight out of college. I, I was a theater major. I went to Spelman in Atlanta. Nice. Um, That's where my daughter went. I'm to a go. legacy. My mom went there. My sister went there. My niece is now going there. Oh my gosh. Um, and I finished school. I was a theater major. I finished school and I moved to New York with my then uh, boyfriend, husband, now my ex. Um, and I sort of started that way. I was in starting the art department. And then I, my very first job, I worked uh, in production as a PA on okay. a music video. What music video? I don't even remember. It was like a low budget <laughs> thing, but I was very, oh, it was God. back when like making the video was like a thing. Yes. Right. On MTV, and, right? Yes. And I was so excited to see all the cameras and the lights and the, and the musicians and the, and the background actors. And I worked for 24 hours straight my very first day, and I loved every minute of it. Okay. But what I learned was that I didn't want to work in production. I wanted to be more on the, more on the creative side, but I didn't know what. Mm -hmm. And then on that job, I met a woman named Susan Lenz, who was a big-time production designer. And I worked with her in the art department, so I started like shopping for furniture and set deck and all that. And then we were doing a commercial once. We were doing a commercial, and on the commercial, there was a stylist that was there, and she, with the wardrobe. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, I like what she's doing. <laughs> and then kind of from then, I just sort of got fell into it and I just kept working. Okay, wait. So then when you went to college and when you you were a theater major, were you considering acting? It was directing. I wanted oh. to be a director. Okay. I never wanted to be in front of the camera or on stage. Always was behind the scenes. Okay. So what made you change your mind once you left? Well, then I, I then I got a real job. I st I did it for real. I got introduced to it for real. And then I learned then, because when you're in college, you don't really know. I mean, I didn't, had no idea what I really wanted to do, right? Mm -hmm. And then when I got real life experience, I then learned and saw what I didn't want to do and what I wanted to do. I, I always say that, right? Like college, 
it doesn't really prepare you for what you're going to do no. after. You think you know what you're going to do there. But then when you get out and you actually get experience, it, it completely can either change your mind or probably re reinforce what you already wanted to do. And more often for than sure. not, once you get out, you're like, this is not it. You do exactly what the opposite. <laughs> you know, I kind of stayed within like the creative path. Yeah. But I, um, but I didn't, it was in theater. It was in the being film. Okay. Yeah. So. Which after- is very different. How so? Um, theater is more like real time, right? Because mm-hmm. you're like performing to an audience in real time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Where theater, where where film is, you know, everything's edited, chopped up, you shoot out of sequence, you know, all of that. Which one do you prefer? Well, all of my experience has been in film, so I guess I prefer film. But I wouldn't mind uh, dabbling in theater and designing a play for sure. Ooh. Now that I've done it right right yeah yeah now that you've done this so which one is uh more intense you would say probably the one where the audience is there or with the one where you have more prep time and there's editing and... i think that film is more intense almost mm-hmm. like a longer stretch like theater is like you you prep it you, you you prep it and then you shoot it i mean you act it in real time and then mm-hmm. with, with film it's like it's a, such a longer stretched out process okay you know what i mean Mm-hmm. Yeah, I th- I think I get what you mean. So, in other words, uh, like when you say, like you rehearse mm-hmm. for theater, you rehearse it, you have your uh your rehearsals, and then you perform the play. Whereas film, you have it's like months. It takes weeks to shoot, days to shoot a scene. Oh, okay. I see you know what, what you're saying. saying now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. So it's more strenuous because it's it's a longer process. Yeah, for okay. sure. Now I I get what you're saying. Yeah, so. For sure. Now, now that we've done this and we kind of talked about like where your passion lies and what you studied, would you say now that you are fully dedicated to styling or would you move out to do something else? Like, would you even go into directing at this point or would you stay on the creative side? I am fully dedicated to costume design. (laughs) There we go. Yes. It took me a long time to get here and I am thankful and I am here and I am ready to keep going. All righty. So we'll get into some Raising Canaan questions. And um, I think one of the first things that I did want to ask you was uh, how do you prepare for styling something as in depth as you are in Raising Canaan? Like what do you do to prepare for all of the characters that you have to dress and what does help look like for you? Um, so it's tons of research. Mm-hmm. Um, when we started season one, we had, it was me and Frank Fleming and we had no clothes mm-hmm. and you get a script, you get outlines and you read the outlines, you read the scripts, you know what you have to prepare for. Oh wait, so I can come in, not to cut you off. Yeah, yeah. You get the scripts? Yeah, we get the scripts. <laughs> yeah. We have to know what, what to, how to design, right? How to prepare for the next thing, the next do Absolutely. people hound you down for spoilers? No. Oh, they're gonna. And do we it sign now. an NDA, so I can never. Good. Good no, for you. No, no, no. I know nothing. <laughs> you know nothing. I didn't get a script. No, I know nothing. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, Keep going. Okay. So you 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 um, were with Frank, and you had yeah, no clothes. Yeah, so season one, and mm-hmm. so you get a so there's a process. You get a script. You read the script, and in your head, you sort of think of these characters. You have ideas for the character and how you how you envision them looking mm-hmm. based off how, they, how they're how they're written. Mm-hmm. And you talk to the director and the showrunner and they have their ideas. So it's very collaborative in that in that way. Oh. And then the research starts because it's period, right? Mm-hmm. So of course I I lived it, but also you don't remember all the little like nuances, right? Mm-hmm. And so you you we have like um catalogs from the period, you know, things you remember, you source online, and you just gather all of this inspiration. We have boards that we make, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then we go out to find it. So in LA, they have tons of rental houses. Like you have Warner Brothers is out there, NBC is out there, all these rental houses are there. Mm-hmm. And you can pull from the rental houses, like the generic 90s clothes, like mm-hmm. the suits and the dresses and all that. But then to try to find like the urban, like the real urban wear was very challenging. Like all the polo, low life stuff. Yeah. Like the well, North Face, the Pele Pele, all of the, the culturally significant pieces of clothing was challenging. And we found that stuff. Instagram was a big help. Mm-hmm. Um, and once the first season aired, then people found us. Mm, right? Okay. So they wanted to give their clothes to, you. to us. Okay. Yes, we rented a lot of pieces, we bought a lot of pieces. Our parents, 
like my sister's grandparents, like a lot of that stuff came from, you know, our own families. Mm -hmm. So I, all over the world. I have a question about the North Face thing. Yeah. Like the North Face, it used to bother me because in 91, was North Face as prevalent? Then? Very popular. Yeah. So in New York, right? I don't know if North Face touched kids as much. Wasn't it Columbia at that time? It was all of it. It was Columbia. It was North Face. It was all of it. Yeah. So do you get annoyed? We have, or... we have some Columbia pieces in there. Yeah. yeah. A little bit. I yeah. saw one on yeah. Famous. Yeah. <laughs> I saw one. Yeah. Yeah. I saw one. I was like, where's the Columbia yeah. at? Yeah. yeah. Like, but, but the polo, that's... That's a sticking gem right there. Now, when you source the polo stuff, do you guys get to keep it or do you have to return it? So some of it's rented from the vendors. Okay. And we okay. give it back to them when we're done and some of it we purchase. Okay. Yeah. Do you well, some of them you purchase. So when you purchase them, they stay on in your warehouse. It or? stays in our costume shop. Yeah. Ooh, nice. Mm -hmm. That costume mm -hmm. shop is probably loaded. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's but some gems for sure. The, I, I can imagine. So over the course of, well, now we can say it's four seasons now because you're almost wrapping season yep, four. Done, yeah. How many pieces have you, would you say that you've amassed so far? Like if I mean, you have. I mean, it's a 10,000 square foot, square foot space. What? Of 90s <laughs> clothes. I mean, there are some, I mean, I don't even know. I mean, thousands of pieces, thousands. tens of thousands of pieces of clothing. Well, how do you catalog it? Do you? Well, well, do you catalog? No, it? we don't. So, so I think that once we series wrap, the principal costumes will be cataloged. Okay. But the rest of the stock is what it's called. Um, it'll just get, go back to the rental shops. Okay. But within our space, we have things divided by like men and women. And there's categories within those sections, like suits, sweaters, dresses, things like that. So I'll go so back. That's how we would catalog, I guess. Oh, okay. I'll go mm -hmm. back to a question because of the Columbia thing. I actually thought of something just now, like. Does it? So I do see people do this online because the show is set in 91, now 92, right? Does it bother you? It's kind of a blurred. Like so technically on the show, they where we left off in season three, we are at we're in 92. We should be like spring 92 mm -hmm. around that part. But does it bother you when people nitpick and say, oh, well, those pants didn't come out in 92 or 91? Because I see people do that in your comments. Like, That's not from there. I'm like, it's a... Do they do that in the comments? They do. Oh, they really? Do. And I I'm one of... I, I never pay attention. <laughs> I'm, I'm one of those people. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, really? I like, I've I, never... Only because I know. <laughs> only I've never I, really noticed the, the really? negative... I've only ever noticed the positive comments, and there are so many positive comments. There are. No, but those are... It's not um, negative, though, right? Because yeah, yeah. they're saying, like, these... Because there was one comment that I read it was like oh the pants that rock had on with the versace belt they said those that that it was a girl i should have wrote it down and i should have copied it here but at that time i was just like uh don't nitpick but well i don't know i mean we do we do do a lot of 90s i mean remember it is 2024 right right so <laughs> we do do a lot of 90s adjacent things that feel like or have the same silhouette or shape that came out in the 92 and early 90s um but you know, at some point we have I have to have some sort of creative liberty to to use things that aren't necessarily from the from that exact year or year. that time. But the best feeling is when I do find those pieces that are actually from like runway shows from nineteen ninety two. I love to use those pieces. And then I have to mix it up, you know. People are understanding. I mean, you can't win them all, right? No, you can't you can't yeah. win them all. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, so and we do. There is a ton. We do a ton of research to make sure, you know, that we we try our best to make sure it's, it is as authentic as it can be. And I think of the other show. I think we do pretty good in comparison <laughs> to others. I heard, heard you. <laughs> heard you. <laughs> I think we do pretty good. I, I hope y'all read between the lines. With that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So in terms of dressing the characters, right? No shade. And, no, no, shade. no. No shade. No shade. But we are. But we are prideful about the work that we do I, yeah, yeah. right yes. so when you are dressing uh different characters and i won't use a specific one yeah, for sure. right now right mm -hmm. but for a scene and because you get the script are you thinking this designer goes here this is for this time frame like i guess what my question here would be is do you use color theory to 
invoke emotion or do you use specific designers to kind of set the tone in a scene or is it just the feel of the entire era? I do use color theory and depends on what's what the scene is. Okay. What's happening in the scene. You got any examples for me? Um so like for Rack, for example, uh-huh. like her character is like a superhero villain. Ooh. Right? That's how I approach her character and her, her and her fashion. Mm-hmm. And so I use a lot of like bondage and like leather and hard metals um to sort of tell that story. Mm-hmm. Um and then or if there's like just in general, if it's like a sad scene, I'll tend to use cooler colors. Mm-hmm. It also just depends on like what the color of the set is too, right? Right. Um but for her, I, I use a lot of metals and leather and, you know, her palette's very, like, sh- like money green and reds, optominal, okay. you know, richer colors. Mm-hmm. So, like, for instance, I, I have a scene that I have in mind. So I always know, like, when someone is getting killed, I always know when someone is going to die because you can tell by what the people have on, right? So, like, for instance, with the last scene of the last episode in the last season, of which is season three, <clears throat> everyone is in dark colors. Even if they had on brighter colors throughout the episode. So, like, for instance, they're in that final episode, there is a scene where Jukebox and Marvin are almost matching each other. They both have on red, red and black. Do you remember? Kind of. Kind of. <laughs> Sorry. So they're, they're in the house. They're in the house with Rock. They're trying to tell her what happened with uh, Kanan. Kanan was kidnapped. And they're both wearing red and black. And that's because they're bearing bad news. Right? And then when we move throughout the episode, we start sure, to see that I'll the color... That. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. If you say so. That's what you got from that scene? Yeah, I love that's it. What, yeah, I girl. Love it. Put it I'm together. going with that. <laughs> but then when we move throughout the episode... <laughs> When we move throughout the episode, it gets darker, right? Because we know that something ominous is about to happen. So Howard, his he normally wears grays. His suits are gray. And then we move throughout the episode. And when we finally see him at the final, in his final scene, I was like, oh, he's going to go. Because he has on a black leather jacket. Everything is dark. And even like his makeup is a little darker too because the lighting isn't as bright in the scene and then rock has on black and then when we finally get to see the reappearance of joey he's in all black and i'm just like oh they do this stuff on purpose no (laughs) i don't think so (laughs) i mean um i like where you're going with it but i don't know if i don't but correct me i mean a lot of it is it's dependent on how many multiples i need what does that mean it's like it's it's also very costume design is also very technical right Mm -hmm. and so um sometimes a scene calls for three or four of the same like three or four or five jackets right so a lot of it is a lot of my design can be because of what i have available right it's 1992 i have to have five of the same jacket or three of the same jacket if the jacket that I have is black, then that's the jacket we're going to wear because I have five of them. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, I get what you're saying now. Yeah. So in other words, I'm thinking too hard about this and that's not where you're going bit. with it. Yeah, but I love that though. I love it. If you say it, I'm yeah, going to go with yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So what parts of your own style are you able to incorporate into Raising Canaan? Jewelry. Oh, nice. I love, as you can see, I'm a jewelry fanatic. <laughs> and I think that by someone's jewelry, for me, it tells a lot about the person, Ooh. you know? And so I learned that from, I worked on, when I first started the business, I worked on a show, well, I worked on a Criminal Intent, one of the Law, one of the yeah. law and Order yeah. uh, spinoffs. Uh, yeah. And Ingrid Price was the designer on that. Mm-hmm. And she, I learned that from her. Like, I always loved jewelry, but she would always put a piece, like a necklace or a ring on somebody, and it would just tell a different story to that person. That's what I do too, oh. but also jewelry was a was a huge thing in the nineties, right? So yes, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, then here's what I'll say, because when when we first started talking, we were talking about you know you're transitioning from Spellman, going into the industry, figuring out exactly what you wanted to do. Would you say? I guess because I don't know a lot of stylists. And I don't know, especially I don't know a lot of established stylists who are working within 
the power verse or out of any other verse or in any other show. It's cool that you were actually able to get into a series like Law and Order, right? And then you get into a series like this where it there's always a continuation. But do you see a lot of people who look like you in these spaces? Meaning, and I'll just say it flat out, are there a lot of black women who work in styling? Costume design. Costume design. So styling and costume design are two different things. Tell them. So styling, you are styling for like a real person, mm -hmm. right? Costume design, you are creating characters. You're creating people. These people don't exist, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot more technical, I think, costume design. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just it's just very different. I guess you really wouldn't know unless you you do it right mm -hmm. um but are there a lot of back to your question are there a lot of black women in this industry that i can sort of look up to or say mentor or train me and the answer is no um i was fortunate when i got into the business that i got to work with some incredible designers like mm -hmm. emmy winning oscar winning designers amazing people mm -hmm. um but i was oftentimes the only black person on their crew and i had to ear hustle. Nobody took my hand and was like, let me show you how to do this. Mm -hmm. Right? I think they saw that I had it in me, but were they, were they, um, were they, did they ever step into that sort of mentor role for me? No, they didn't. They had me on their team because mm -hmm. I was good and I was capable. Mm -hmm. Right? But it wasn't like warm and fluffy by any stretch. Mm -hmm. And so I had to work very hard to get to where I am. Mm -hmm. And I said that once I got here, if I ever did, because I thought I was never going to get here, but Frank Fleming and Sasha Penn mm -hmm. gave me this incredible opportunity. And once I got it, I said, I'm going to have a department where people want to come to work every day and that they are respected and that they enjoy the space that we have created together. Mm -hmm. I think that I have done that. So this is um, now I always it's funny because I always ask about mentorship. Like, how do you so now that those things happen to you? Right. How do you pay it forward now? Yes, you have a great working environment, but are you mentoring other other potential costume designers that are trying to break into the industry? Yes, I mentor. I mentor women and young men that I feel have a passion for it. Mm -hmm. If I see that you have a passion for it, I will do my best, right? And that I'll be kind. I will give you advice. I'm not going to like sort of like, um, you know, I'm going to, I'm not going to withhold information. Mm -hmm. Gatekeeping. Yeah, I'm not mm -hmm. going to gatekeep, right? Mm -hmm. But you also have to prove to me that you want to do this, right? Right. And so when I find those women or those young men that, and it's hard, right? Because people want to get into the business for all the wrong reasons. They think that it's glamorous, that and it, it still has work. That, and it has that element to it, right? Mm -hmm. But a lot of my work, ninety percent of my work, is really hard. It's hard work. It's like hours away from home, you know, sixteen hour days at work. Mm -hmm. And talk know, about the research too. The research, all the personalities, like the producers, the actors, my crew, having to like listen and be a shoulder, right? It's like it's not easy. No. Do you think people get the wrong impression of what the business is from the outside? And then once the the wool is removed from their eyes, they get kind of jaded by it? Um, I think that the jaded part comes from, like, honestly, like all the hours you work. And it's, it's a very thankless, it can be a very thankless job, too. It's like you work so hard, everyone still has, like, an opinion mm -hmm. about all the work that you've, you know, that you've done, you mm -hmm. know, or they're never happy, you know. So I think that that plays a role also in people becoming, I'm not jaded yet because I'm just so happy to be here <laughs> and I'm so thankful that I have this opportunity um, and I want to keep going. Right. Right. I want to keep going. I want to keep working. So I'm not, I'm not jaded. And I just feel like my soul is so full when I get to go to work every day. <laughs> you know, I just love it. I love what I do. Oh, I, that, that makes me feel better to hear. Right. Like once people love what they, it shows, you can tell when someone likes yeah, do, what they do what or do. even when they love what they do, it shows in their work product. Right. And I, I think it's cool that you are mentoring people because I feel like we need people to guide. Yeah. The, it, it, 
it always shows in the work yeah. <laughs> and the final product when people are that way. Yeah. And you can tell. So, And the other thing is, I, you know, I've done every job within costumes from the bottom. I was the PA. Uh-huh. I worked on the truck. I like to say I was I was their truck bitch for like many years. <laughs> you know, I did laundry. I restocked the clothes. I cleaned dirty shoes. I you steamed. You ironed. I steamed. You... I ironed. I set costumes. I wrapped rooms. All of the things. And so I think that that has made me a better designer because I have respect for my crew. Do you feel like okay? So when you first tried to break into the industry, do you feel like? There were some barriers to entry for you to get in there. In what way? In like, so we say, we talk about gatekeeping because we have verbiage for it now, right? But do you feel like there were people who specifically tried to make your way inside harder or were people helping you along the way, but not in a explicit way? Whereas they weren't outright helping you, but they weren't necessarily very welcoming to you as well? Yeah, I think it was more of that. I mean, I think that my work sort of spoke and speaks for itself. And I think that once I got the opportunity to do whatever the job was, I gave it 110%. And I think that was undeniable. So I think because of my work ethic, then I just kept getting brought onto other jobs. Do you know? Well, how do you... So I, I thank you for telling me the personal pieces of it because although we are talking about raising Canaan I I always like to get to know the people that I'm actually talking to right like because you can kind of tell where they're going with their story or or even how you pick certain pieces right because you said jewelry right and we see those we see big medallions Mm -hmm. right we see big medallions we see rings we don't really do we see a lot of earrings on this one because yeah I'm trying to think because Jukebox doesn't doesn't wear earrings. Um, who wears earrings? Well, who? Yeah, she wears the earrings. A lot of my smaller, she, all hers my are smaller, smaller though, right? characters, like uh. my day players. I always try to incorporate like the nameplate earrings. Okay, or, okay. Like, because like, that's like, what I was looking earring. for, right? Yeah, they're there. They're just hard because the hair is hard to always see that. See but them. I, I make sure I, I throw those in there. The figure eights, you know, the the grapes. Oh, I was super proud yes. of those. Remember they the did, grapes? Yeah, yes, and um, yes, yes, yes. The character uh, she played the girlfriend, the singer. Um, Which one from she the played, group? Uh, no episode season two. She played like Lou's love interest. Oh yes, uh, Jessica. Not is no, it Jessica? Jessica. It was the other way. She was the singer. I can't think Pauline. of her name. Pauline is yeah. Her name is yes. Pauline in real life. Wait. <laughs> I was about to say her name and then I stopped. I can't think of Hold on, I, it'll come to me and I'll Google it. Anyway, so I put the grapes on her, but mm-hmm. she and I was so when I found out, I was so excited about those grapes. And then <laughs> How'd you find them? There, the woman, um, what's her name too? I'm gonna give her a plug. She's great. <laughs> okay, all right. Like, so we'll get back have, to her. <laughs> it's Vendor on Instagram, and she's a wonderful woman, black woman, small business owner. She's awesome. Oh, I like that and for she us. She had the jewelry. She had the grapes and. Wait, so are a lot of these pieces, so I know that you source some, but do you make some of them as well? Like the jewelry? No, not oh, the jewelry. The, clo- the clothes? The clothes, yeah. All of Joey's clothes are custom. We huh. make all of his pieces. I design those pieces. This sounds so rich. <laughs> yeah. All of his clothes are custom. Everything he wears is custom. Well, who who are some of the people that you work with to make the custom pieces? So we worked with um, Dapper Dan. Season one, uh-huh. his daughter and his grandson. Okay. Not directly with him, but his daughter and grandson. Was that the MCM stuff? No, they did no. the Gucci. Oh, and then Misa oh the Hilton, jacket. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And then Misa Hilton did all the MCM. Yeah, she did the MCM. So we collaborated stuff. with her for the MCM. Nice, yeah. nice, mm-hmm. nice, nice. All right. So do you. Because I, I have a question about like the tailor, the tailoring mm-hmm. or. Do you make pieces like so? When you say you work with them, right? Are you a seamstress as well, or do no, I have you? A, I have a tailor. I have a tailoring shop, so I have okay. a head tailor, Dane. Uh-huh. And then I have three women, well, two women that work under him, and they do all of the actual like making of the clothes. So I design the clothes. Okay, that's what I, that was Dane, my next question. Do you design it? Yeah. You draw it out, and you have a vision of what it's gonna look. I like? I don't sketch, no. but I I'm very visual, and okay. so I'll, what I'll do. This is my process. Okay, tell so me. I'll go through my racks. I'll pull a garment. That has a great shape, right, uh, from the period. Mm-hmm. And I'll take that piece and I'll say, okay, I want to use. So when you come to the OC, I have a swatch wall. Mm-hmm. And on my swatch wall, I have all of my fabrics, right? All of my exotic leathers, 
rayon, whatever it is, right? And I'll take this track jacket and I'll say, okay, this is the shape that I want, but where it's gray here, it's going to be python. And where it's this, it's going to be that. So I'll change it up, right? Mm -hmm. But I know the shape is correct because that piece came from like the 90s. Uh -huh. That's how kind of how I come up with my ideas. Okay, so then even because... Uh, so some of the silhouettes that you use for Joey's character who plays unique uh, some of them are kind of comparable to what we see on Pop and Snap right with the tracksuits mm -hmm. oh, are those tailor made too? Yeah they're yeah. all custom made too yeah. yeah I figured once they were I matching I to use like different yeah that was Sasha <laughs> wanted that I love that so that cute. was great direction yeah um but I try to use like, and I hope it translates. I try to use like older feeling fabrics, and I want their char characters to feel more of like a throwback, where he feels kind of more current to the time. So I hope that that translates. Well, you, you know? feel that who feels more current to the time? That Joey feels more current in the '90s, and that they feel more oh, of like a throwback. Oh, like so, they feel like the what they're supposed to be. Yeah. So right. like my so like my fabric choices and like my palette for them. My intention is that it feels a little older, more dated, uh -huh. right? And that his feels more current for the for the time period that we're shooting in. No, no, no. I, I yeah. completely get what you're saying. Yeah. No, no. But do it you makes... see that? No, I do. I do see it. I mean, I'm afraid to say what I see now because you're like, no, no, no. That wasn't oh. me, girl. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no. That's not where we were going with it at all. <laughs> well, is it important to include... Uh... <sighs> This seems like a weird question to say, right? Because it's a period piece. But is it important to include contemporary designers from that time? So, like, you see, like, how we have Dapper Dan, who has been active in the industry for a very long time, and what he did with reworking different designer fabrics. Is it important to you to incorporate Dapper Dan's work into the seasons yeah. because of what he went through throughout that time? Yeah, because he was relevant then, right? Oh, so we yeah. use a lot of like hit. He was a great reference, influence, inspiration, and uh -huh. then with like Patrick Kelly is a big black designer back then. Uh -huh. Alaya, like all the mainstreamers, but that were popular then. We try to, I would, lo I love to use their clothes. Uh -huh. Bob Montana, like all those. Oh, she's naming designers. everybody, yeah. right? <laughs> but I, I, you know, I learned all about all these designers. I mean, some of them I knew, but a lot of them, like Patrick Kelly, I didn't know about. Frank taught me that. Uh -huh. You know, uh, a lie I, I knew, but I didn't know how big it was. Yeah. Back then. So, who, so who's your favorite person to style or to design for? To design I don't for. want to just say style. Uh, I like Joey and I like Patina. <laughs> yeah, I like them. The Those are my favorites. Too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I have a good time with their costumes. What about for you, though? Like what? How do you define your own? look or your own style and I'm using style for you because of how I think you may incorporate it in your work as a costume designer um I like effortless I like chic uh -huh. clean lines simple what about your silhouettes um it changes with my weight <laughs> so <laughs> that's I, a very honest answer <laughs> so I had a baby and I gained all this weight, so I went more like I have a niece that says I dress like a dyke. <laughs> what? Lesbian? <laughs> a man? <laughs> um, but I'm really into like the cargo. I like that that brand Attico. Like my pants now are yes. Attico. I'm into that. Uh -huh. I love like the what's that that jean shape that um that he was wearing that kind of like go, there's a name for like the horseshoe jeans. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. The yeah. ones that come out like this. But I like, you know, if I had to define myself, I'm more, I'm, I'm very, t I like, I'm, I like timeless fashion. Okay. I like pieces that you can buy that I could have bought 10 years ago that are still relevant. Me and too. that's not fast fashion. I'm not a huge fast, fast fashion lover. I mean, I appreciate fast fashion, but I don't really subscribe to that. Uh, we all should not be. I understand the the price point and why some people, they just don't yeah. have a choice, right? Like, I get that point of it, but, like, it is killing the, I the, know. the, the atmosphere, guys. It is. But in terms of, um, let's, let's, let's get to, like, some fun stuff, right? Okay. So we know that you style the people on Raising Canaan, and you came by way of Frank Fleming and... Uh, I would say that well would you say that you're his protege of sorts you think so <laughs> um 
What do you think? I, I don't know. Why, I, why are you saying you think so? I'm I asking. really, I, go ahead. Go ahead. You can say. I think so. I yes. Think I think that I am Frank Fleming's protege. I I'm think, glad you said yes, that because I, now. Because <laughs> I admire him so much. Me too. Yeah. Me too. So now let's go head to head with some of Frank's designs. Okay. <laughs> okay. All righty. So he, here's, here's, what, here's what I'll say, right? Frank does or did a lot of work on Ghost, right? And he, he, he pretty much outlined how they look he and, did. and what and what that show looks like yes. and the type of designers that you, they use and even just like how contemporary a lot of the outfits that they wear are styled, designed, and even just how the costume comes together yes. in the scene. So with that being said, <laughs> here's what I'm going to ask you. Who's the better dressed character? Okay. Right? Okay. So... We'll do some pe- I think most of the people that I have on this list, they're all from Ghost. Uh, okay. Because I, I didn't do too... Did I do anybody from Force? No, I actually didn't do anybody from Force. Okay, so we'll just do uh, Ghost and Raisin Canaan. So, okay. the first one, out the bat. Who's better, Monet or Rock? Rock. <laughs> <laughs> the bias is coming through. <laughs> all right. Sax or Detective Howard? Howard. Why? Because I designed the costume. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have a three-way. Okay. And this month, this one may be a little bit more difficult, but Uncle Marvin, Uncle Lou, or Tommy? I know that there's three. I think, um, but of I those, like them all. I do. I'm going to say that, right? Um, but I, I'm going to say Marvin. Because Marvin is so relatable. Because we all have that uncle. We do. Right? And it's like... He reminds me of my uncle. Yes. yes. And he's such a talented actor. And he's such a wonderful person. They all are. Right? Uh-huh. I love all of them. But I... Something about him, I just... I just see family members in him. So that's why I'm going to say him. Okay. But what about how he dresses? That's what I mean. Oh. That's what I'm talking about. His clothes. So, that's what I mean. You know what I thought your answer was going to be? And, and I'll keep moving forward. Because he's the one that can do almost anything, right? Like he wears slacks. He does. And he wears har- he wears leather bottom shoes. Yes. But then he can also put on some sneakers or boots. Yes. And he can also wear like streetwear as well. But that's why I thought you were gonna pick him because he can transition. Ooh, Lulu? No. Oh Uncle Marvin. Oh, Uncle Marvin. He can do either one. Well, Lulu is the one that typically can do that wears both. He'll do like the suits and I mean the the slacks and the dress shirt and the hard bottom shoes and then he'll wear the jeans and the boots. And and Marvin tends to only wear like the slacks, hard bottom shoes, unless he's like committing a crime. Right. That's so. That's you what I was mean? thinking of. Yeah. Like when he commits a crime, yeah, he still looks good when he yeah. commits a crime. <laughs> yeah, on. yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha. All right, next one. Blanca or Burke? Burke. They dress exactly alike. Mm-hmm. Burke. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is a, this is a good one. Uh, ghost or unique? See, they're very different. They are. So I'm gonna say both. Because it's like two. I am because you can't. Yeah, but listen, I am. It's not that type of show. <laughs> you can't say both. Okay. Well, tell me. Tell me why you're they're choosing different, both. Like, because Ghost is really the Tom Ford, right, of the time. And even when he's gonna kill someone. Yeah. He has on, he has on a cashmere jogging suit. Clothes. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll let you go on that. All okay. right. What about Tariq or Kanan? Uh, Young Kanan, obviously. Um, I'll give it to Tariq. Ha! Huh. How come? Um, I'll give it to Tariq because he's so current. I guess the fashion's so current, and uh-huh. you know, people. I guess people really gravitate to that. Uh-huh. Maybe I don't know. Okay, Brayden or famous or sh- his name uh, Sean. Uh, famous. Why? Because he reminds me of like high school. Like I, I was in high school during this time. He's, I just feel like when I see him and I, when I style costume designed him, I just felt like I know him too. You know him too? Yeah. Okay. How do you draw inspiration for completely new characters? Um, when I read the script, I, I can, I can see them in my head. I can do that. I visualize them in my, in my head and how they sound and how they look. Um, and then when I know who the actual, actual actor is, 
based on how they look, then I find real people that kind of resemble them mm-hmm. during for that period. Mm-hmm. You know, I say, oh, this, this, he looks like, I don't know, Will Smith, uh-huh. right? And then let me see what Will Smith was wearing during that time. Oh, that kind of makes sense for the character. Do you, I know that we said that it's collaborative earlier, right? But do some of the actors have any input in what their characters wear? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I like to be, I'm open to actors. And Are you? They, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think it helps, right? It helps. Okay. Um, but there's no, there's no better feeling as a costume designer than when the actors put their clothes on and they transform. Into like, the character, right? Yes. Like Wendell has been, fan- Wendell Pierce has uh-huh. been, fan- and Eric, Erica Woods. Uh-huh. They have been They amazed. pay pop and snaps, guys. They, yeah. And when he, and he told me himself, he was like, when he puts his clothes on, he just feels like snaps, right? Mm-hmm. And I love that feeling. <laughs> oh, that I mean, love it. That must make you feel good. It who does. has, who tries to, who put, not who tries to, who has the most input when they're uh, putting on their costumes? What do you mean the most input? Meaning like. If they put on, so like for instance, when uh, Joey Badass, who plays Unique, he comes in and he gets his Dapper Dan Gucci jacket. He's like, oh, I like this one, but can we make it tighter? Or can we do a different color? Or just whatever input they may have for the character. Um, They don't typically, I mean, everybody seems to. They you, trust your guidance. Yeah, <laughs> they do. I haven't really had anybody give me any pushback like that. They all are like, they all really love the clothes, which makes me feel which makes me know that I'm doing the right thing. There you go. There yeah. You go. All righty. So based on, a, this is just a character question, right? So like if you were to meet these characters in their world, right? Based on how they dress, who would you take shopping with you? Uh, like how you did with your grandma back in Alabama. Yeah, who would I take shopping with me? Uh-huh. I would take Joy really? shopping with me. Who's going to spend some money? <laughs> Joey. Yeah, there we go. That's what we take it. Yeah, we take Joey with okay. me. Okay, so I, I need you to pick two more because I was going to do three. Like, which three characters? Okay, I would take Joey. I would take... Um, I would take Famous. Okay, because he'll make it fun. Mm-hmm, I love him. Uh-huh. Um, and I would take... Uh, I would take Pops. Aw, really? Mm-hmm. She's dope. Mm-hmm. Isn't oh, she? Pops. Yeah. <laughs> she's she's, yeah, dope. she's wonderful. Oh man. Okay. All righty. So then we described your own personal style. We say chic and things like that. But if you weren't on Raising Canaan and you had to pick another period piece to style for, even if it wasn't period, a matter of fact, we can we can make it broad. What would you like to work on going forward? Because the Raising Canaan is eventually going to end, guys. I'm sorry to break it to you. <laughs> but eventually it will end. Where would you like to see your costume design growth to go? I want to stay doing period shows. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought that I didn't want to do period. Uh-huh. And then I kept, so before, this is how the universe works, right? So before I got this opportunity, I was assisting for many years and I kept getting put on period shows, like The Nick, all these like right, period movies. or period Oh, wait, movies you shows. worked on The Nick? Yeah. Yeah, I know Manifest, mm-hmm. right? The Nick, too. But, and SNL, The Nick, too. Saturday Night Live, I did that. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, why do I, why do I keep getting put on these period shows? <laughs> like, what is this? I don't want to do this. And But now. Yeah, and if I had not had those experiences, I would not be able to execute at the level that I execute. I wouldn't be able to do it. There is no way. Okay. So that's why I had given those jobs. Would you ever do something, because these seem actually pretty intense to me. So would you ever do something like like Game of Thrones or something like Victorian pieces or things like that? I don't think so. No? Why not? Hard. Yeah. Hard. And yeah. the craftsmanship is. Yeah, it's hard. I'm not saying that I couldn't do it. No, the I don't think that you could. given the opportunity. Uh-huh. But. I don't really see my career going in that direction. But I don't know what the universe has for me. And I'm open to anything that comes my way. Okay, but where would you like to go? Like, not not yeah, in terms would, of another show, but like yeah. if there was a period that you could work oh, in, like, a certain would you year. like to do the 60s, yes. 70s? Oh, okay. I would like to do the 60s into the 70s. Yeah. Really? I'm curious to see how you would do that. I would love to do, do like do a that. Carmichael kind of like biopic or something like that. Oh, that cool. would be dope. You know what? Black I Panther. saw ah, yeah. that's been done, but I would still like to. So, like, as a fan watching the show, right? We get attached to people, 
and you have people that you work with and power is known for being a revolving door for some characters right like some there are tons of people who are going to die off of the show and they kill people off uh kill characters off i don't want to make it too real how do you when you have a working relationship with someone and you really get along and you guys and you're able to style them well and they take your direction well and they have great input and they they don't give you any problems how were you able to detach from those characters who are no longer there anymore like i'll give you an example omar epps is no longer going to be on the show whether or not you guys had a good relationship yeah. or I'm just giving it an example. Like, how do you say, okay, damn, like that was my friend. <laughs> now I don't have to stop for this person anymore. How do you detach from, or how do you not get attached to certain people when you're working with them? I mean, honestly, <laughs> no, be honest. I don't, um, for me when they get, I, I mean, it's not personal, obviously. Right. It's right, right, just right. the character they're, they're, that they're playing. Uh -huh. And so I'm not really attached. It's like, I maybe enjoy designing for that character, but once they're gone, I mean, I, it's like it's like I'm on to the next thing because it's so I don't much really work. have the time, yeah, yeah, to invest myself in that way, right? So I don't really feel. I mean, I'm sad for them, you know, but yeah. I don't really feel. It's okay. You just yeah, keep moving. I'm thinking about the next. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Yeah, it's like <laughs> just like okay, yeah. next, next yeah. look. And bring TV, them in. TV moves really fast. Uh -huh. It's like so quick. It's every eleven days we're filming an episode, so there's no real time to to really grieve the yeah. character. Like how we <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, so then I have like error questions for you, and then like I think we can wrap it up. Okay. But I think you do a good work. I think you do really good work. You and your team. I don't want to discredit anyone else, Thank but you. you and your team, you do really good work in terms of bringing the characters to life and making sure that they look like people from the era. Now, guys, keep in mind that everything is not going to be exactly from 91, 92, or even 93. It's just within the era, right? Mm -hmm. But would you say that fashion influenced the era or do you think, well, do you think that fashion influenced music of the era or do you think that music influenced fashion from the era? I think that like culturally, culturally, uh, music influences fashion. Okay. If I'm answering that correctly. Yeah. I, th I feel like you're answering it correctly. I think that from a cultural standpoint, I think that we influence fashion. I, when you say we, what do you mean? Black people. Ha <laughs> ha. I just, I'm just trying to get you out there to say it. <laughs> All righty. So do you get any pushback from any of the designers for using their pieces? Mm -mm. No. Are people happy that you are using their pieces in the show and it's bringing more attention to them? I don't know. Huh. I, answer that question. I, don't know. I know the fans love it. That's, that's it. Why, and that's why I do it. Right. You know, it's like, you know, go where you're celebrated. And so... I mean, the, the way that people that watch the show love the clothes, it's, it, I don't know, it's like a dream come true. I, I can't explain how I feel. It's like I was telling you earlier, it's like I have this, I have imposter syndrome, right? Because uh -huh. I feel like, I feel so undeserving in a lot of ways. And I feel like I'm just doing my job. Like, what's the big deal? Like, it's, you know? Mm -hmm. And maybe I'm jaded in that way. It's like, this is work for me, mm -hmm. right? It's so, when I see that the tweets and like everybody tells me or DMs me about how great my work is and can mm -hmm. they shadow me. It's I, I see them all. I can't respond to everybody, but I do read them and I see them and I'm so appreciative and grateful mm -hmm. for the recognition. I, I, I love that for you. Thank you. <laughs> I, Thank I, you. I, I love that for you. I like that you're being recognized and I like that you were able to come and talk about all of the work that you've done. Now, before we leave, yes. <laughs> I think I just have like, maybe I have one more question. Question. Okay. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Oh, yeah. Okay. So <laughs> you don't have to. Don't worry about anybody's feelings when you say this. Who you think is the best dressed outside of their characters? Like in real life. Like in real Yes. Offset. Oh, in real life. Yeah. I love <laughs> I love Joey's style. I think that he is incredible. I think he has the best. I think that he is the best dressed. No one else. What about women? Um, uh, I think Bettina does a great job. I think that she's great, you know. Okay. Yeah. And if if you 
if, for instance, you got sick one day at work, right, and you weren't there and your team mysteriously disappeared, who do you think could go into the shop and dress themselves as their character without any assistance? Like with actor? Yeah. I think they all could at this point. I think they all sort of feel it and know who they are. I think they all could walk in there and, and dress themselves. Okay. Yeah, yeah. for sure. All righty. Last question. <clears throat> now... I know that you you don't watch the other shows, right? And I think that may be a good thing. It Keeps is you, for me. It makes you completely immersed in this world, right? In the world that you are creating as a costume designer. Why is the story of Raising Canaan important? Um, I think that the story of Raising Canaan is important. Can you phrase that in a different way? Ask me that in a different way. It, is the this story it, necessary? Like the themes within the story, is it important for the culture? Or how is it important? I for think the that these types of shows are important because it keeps black creatives working. Mm. Right? It gives us a platform to, to work. And so that's why I think that these types of shows are important. I like that. Shout out to Sasha Penn. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Sasha Penn. <laughs> Shout out to Sasha Penn. Yes. Alrighty. Cheers to that. Cheers to that. And thank you to Frank Fleming for finding thank you. Thank you to Frank Fleming. <laughs> yes. Alrighty. We love him. It has been a pleasure speaking with you and to just pick your brain about all of the things that people love and tweet you about that they probably sometimes may get an answer through DM for and sometimes they may not. Mm-hmm. But now they have a frame of reference to go into and to tap into to figure out how you do all of this mm-hmm. and congrats to you Thank on you. everything. I can't wait to see what you Thank have you. in store for us Thank for you. season four. Thank you. Can, you. can I just say one more thing? Yes, yes, yes. Is that everybody is going to have their turn. That's right. Yes. Everybody will have their turn. Just do the work, right? And you will have your turn. And on that note, Mm -hmm. peace out, guys. Peace out. (laughs)